Hello again friends, I'm back with another video. Today's video we're going to talk about a watercolor technique for how to make a tree. So this is my little sample here that I made um, just to give you an idea of how we're going to talk about the different types of greens we'll be using for the leaves and a little bit of a wash style for the ground. Now I picked up the book, Do You Know Your Colors? just to give you an idea for the many different types of greens you will see outside. So the green hue is just one, it is in the middle, it's this color that they wrote for green, but really green is made by mixing blue and yellow. So you can get all kinds of greens that have more yellow in them with more of a yellow green look to greens that have more of a blue-green feel, especially the way you see with this swampy grass in the back. So I mix blue and yellow together to make the color green. How many green things do you see? Well, we see our turtle, our frog jumping. We've got an inchworm climbing up here, a green fly, some grass, a green snake hiding, We've even got a praying mantis and a Katie did. So all we're gonna need for this project is a set of watercolors. You'll remember these, it's what we use in mini Monet's. Any kind that you have at home will work. All you really need is the yellow and the blue. For this, I am gonna use some of the green in the middle. Okay, so I am ready to paint now. I've got my watercolor palette here at the top. I have a, my brush, just gonna use kind of a medium sized brush today, my cup of water. I have a paper towel to wipe off any excess water. This technique of making the tree, especially the leaves, this way, I need my brush to be a little more dry than how we're gonna kind of contrast with a very um, watercolor wash type grass for the base of our tree or not the base of our tree but where the tree is growing from and then I also have a styrofoam tray paper plate works fine just where I can mix some of my yellows and blues and greens to get the different types of green because remember we're gonna go everywhere from a very yellow green to a traditional hue of green to a blue green for the shadows so to get started, I'm gonna get my brush nice and wet. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of pre-wet these colors with my yellow, then get my green a little wet. Go ahead and wet my blue. It's okay if the colors mix a little bit because we are gonna be mixing them today. So I wanna start with the lightest color. In this picture, I have the sun shining this way. Um, so it's gonna go light to a medium to a dark in this order. With watercolors, you always wanna start with the lightest color first because watercolors are very transparent or translucent media, which means that the white of the paper or whatever color paper you're working on will show through the colors. So I'm gonna start with that yellow. I'm gonna move my palette here so you can see where I'm mixing. Kinda of spread it around over here. Now these are a semi-moist watercolor too, so I don't always have to dip my brush into water. I'm gonna rinse off just a little bit of that yellow, grab myself some green. Not too much green. Remember yellow is a weak color when it comes from mixing, so you're gonna need a lot more yellow than you would of the green. So I've got a nice little yellow green there. I'm actually gonna add a little more yellow on top. I wanna lighten it up just a little bit. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And now I know in class I normally tell you not to, but I actually want you to kind of press your brush kind of in little circles and gentle hops. Similar to the hops that we do with our, getting the water off of our brushes. I always say do bunny hops on the paper towels. But that's kind of what you're gonna do. And you don't wanna make them all in a row, up and down or side to side. You want to spread them across your paper. So these are gonna be the lightest leaves that we have on our tree. Now I've even left some space where you see the paper here. 
and that's so that will give us a place to add our tree branches in at the end. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And since this is a little wet, I'm gonna give it a second to dry. I'm gonna dry my brush a little bit too. And now I'm gonna grab just some of the plain green. Spread it out here on my palette. You can see it's making my bristles spread. Usually this is the part where I tell my artist, oh, your brush is thirsty, get it in some water. But for this type of tree technique, we wanna keep our brush more dry. So we do kind of want our bristles to look a little bit crazy. So now I'm gonna keep up with that same kind of bunny hop blotting, and I'm gonna work in the middle, kind of from the middle to the bottom left to make the medium leaves. Again, make them dance all around. You can throw one or two up there. There we go. I'm gonna rinse my brush one more time. I'm gonna give it a second to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and add my darkest leaves, the most shadow, it's gonna be a blue-green. A lot of times when you work in watercolor, you actually don't wanna use black, you wanna use blue in place of black. So that's what we're gonna do here. So I've got some plain green mixed there, just the plain hue of green. I'm gonna add just a touch of blue. Oh, dripped on my tree, that's okay. It's just gonna become one of the dark leaves. I'm gonna add just a little more of this blue. I wanna push it and make it really dark and a really good shadow. Now my brush I feel like is still a little too wet. I'm gonna blot it on my paper towel. I really want my bristles to be able to spread. And when the brush is wet, they don't spread as well. Okay, so I think I got it. So now like we said earlier, we're gonna move a light to the medium to the dark, the yellow green to the green to the blue green. So I'm gonna start blotting and twisting this over here. I'm gonna get a little bit darker, it's still a little wet. Really swish it around. And add it down here around the bottom. So right now we have got the top leafy part of our tree. Now we're gonna move to brown for the trunk. I'm gonna make it kind of a thin trunk. I don't want a very thick trunk today. So I've had my brush a little wet, got some water on it, and I'm gonna activate my semi-moist brown to get ready to start painting the trunk. I'm gonna start at the base, work my way up. Now I can see I've got a lot of water. That's what this puddling is here. I don't want that look, so I'm gonna dry off my brush and use that puddle and spread it up into my tree. Or sorry, spread it into where the leaves are growing. Give my trunk a little bit of a curve here. Now I'm gonna switch brushes to a thinner brush so that I can paint where the trunk will move underneath the leaves. Now the reason why we didn't paint the trunk first is just because with the yellow green, it would be really hard to see it on top of the brown. So now what you do, you kind of fill through in some of the spots where we left some of the white paper and it's gonna look like your tree trunk. Now I had less water here, the watercolor didn't look as transparent, so it ended up being a little bit darker which I kind of like going through the tree and under the leaves, I should say. And I can make those lines kind of follow down into my trunk and give it a nice look there. And if you want to plan, you can also use a pencil, kind of plan out where you want your trunk lines and tree branch lines to go through but kind of less is a little bit more sometimes. I'm gonna fill in the space because it looks like it would connect there. 
think this one might be my last little guy sticking out. Now you can go back if you want. You can add some more brown lines. You can even throw in some yellow into the trunk if you would like and give it a little bit of a color variation there. And you can blend it while it's still a little bit wet. Now to get the grass, I mentioned earlier we were going to do a watercolor wash. I'm going to scoot up my paper some. You can't quite see the bottom of my tree. So if you remember from a watercolor wash, I believe we did one earlier in the year, you're going to take and you're going to wet your paper. I'm not going to get the water too close to the trunk. I don't want the trunk to blend into this and start to spread just yet. So I've got it nice and wet grab some green. I'm just going to stick with the middle middle green, our plain hue of green. I'm going to start letting it paint and spread. I don't want to get too much water on it, again because I don't want it to spread too much into the trunk of the tree. And I'm just really kind of spreading the water around this green water that I've made. I'm going to kind of paint away from my trunk. I don't want that water, that green water, to pull up at my tree trunk. Don't want any space. I will let it kind of cover up just the base. Gives a nice little look where the grass is growing around the trunk. For the last part, for a little bit of shadow, I'm going to switch back to my thin brush. Go with just some of the green here that's not very wet. And I'm actually going to kind of blob and spread again. Because the sunlight, our lightest tree leaves, we're here on the top right, which means the shadow is going to fall onto the left side of the tree. Just using the same kind of spinning and bunny hops. I'm going to add the shadow down here. And you can play with it as much as you want, get it really dark. You can make it extend all the way to the side of your paper if you would like. And you can even throw some of the yellow into your grass. Some light color grass over here, maybe throw some back over here, dotting and swirling, kind of keeping it messy. This style of watercolor is not um, meant to be really neat and refined, but just as a way to get color onto the paper, a little bit impressionistic, if you will. There, there is our start to our one type of technique for creating a tree using watercolor. The combinations between yellow-green to green and blue-green. Look forward to seeing y'all next time.